And we did it. Hey, everyone, I'm very sorry for the delay. Uh, what happened is basically... <laughs> I was still logged into the Airwiggles account on uh, my streaming software on OBS and um, and then it was like, oh, I can't find your broadcast. Where's your broadcast? So yeah, that was uh, a bit sad. So apologies for that, but lesson learned. Next time that won't happen again. Um, and also uh, another apologies from Ash Reed. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it tonight. Um, some work came in between and that can happen when meetings overrun so yeah very sad but he will be here in the future and um we've got three incredible reels today by vincenzo bellanova by daniel dvorianov i'm sure i've butchered that and by tony cable um and yeah um thanks everyone for tuning in i am hopefully gonna have a smooth experience from now on i think we've got all the technical issues out of the way but yeah how is everyone doing hello casper.exe and also hey damien great to have you here all right let's get into it I love that last part. Big claps, big claps, and hello green two three one. Welcome, welcome. So, Mincenzo, super super nice reel. First impressions. Um, really really love the clips you've chosen. They are high quality, and you've got kind of like a range of of styles in there, but not two out there so it's it's still pretty um pretty detailed and yes i agree katie it's it's definitely um made me curious as well what is that game hmm gris interesting i'm gonna have to check that out um speaking of that actually these um whatever it's called <sighs> what are they called they're called the names of the games, the lower third, I guess. Um, it would be really useful if you could leave them on screen, even if you make them slightly more opaque and kind of like move them to the side and also add the, the developer. Um, so who made this game? Um, same with the other things, just so that it's very, very clear whose it is. Um, but yeah, you've got redesigned, so that's good. Um, Cool. In terms of the clips, so overall, um, hey Vincenzo, nice. Good that you could make it and tune in, so so I get to directly have some dialogue with you. Um, yeah, man, really really cool reel, very very nice. Um, so overall, um, impressions. I think uh, in general, like the the pace of it is really good. Um, my one thing is this clip is very, very long. There's a lot happening, but it's it's pretty long. It feels like almost too long. Um, I would probably cut it at around 
or maybe it's not too long. Yeah, it's 32 seconds. I would almost make it like around 20-ish, uh, but maybe it's because, let's see. I'm in two minds about that. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd finish it about here, probably, and then move on to the next thing. Mainly because I feel with the demo reels, it's like you want to... Although the long, this long clip is, is, it definitely isn't like a major thing in the reel, to be honest. It's still like a, a killer reel. Um, but it's just kind of like we want to keep the attention kind of focused and bring in something new, kind of showing off different styles because, of course, it's like, okay, you know, you've done the sword stuff, you can do that, that's really good. There's not huge amounts of different things. I mean, the energy attacks are pretty interesting, though, to be fair, so I guess maybe if you would do that, probably actually leave some of these in because these are more interesting than the initial sword fight. Yeah, it's keeping the listener engaged, that's it. Thank you, Sandwich. In terms of the actual um, redesign, so I think overall, um, again, like like basic first impressions, I feel that everything you have in there is really high quality. So like all the stuff you've got in there is is superb. So that's really cool. Um, there are, however, some places where I feel like you could bring in even more detail and more um, kind of like pad it out a little bit to make it more interesting and to emphasize kind of really the bigger moments. I feel like a lot of it is very literal and you can bring more non-literal elements into here. So like more cinematic and just things to make it bigger and more exciting. Um, and cause there are some moments of like more downtime and then you can contrast that even further. Um, so in the first clip, that's a lot of the sword impacts and like the running, having a little bit more, um, like ambience as well. Second clip is definitely also more ambience and probably like the, the, the impacts of the sword. And then in the third, actually. I think it would be cool to have some kind of also indicator of speed as we go. Because I feel like you've nailed the, the creature and all of that. But for the rest, there's not that much going on so maybe like uh, in the background something that is initially there and, and can be moved further in the back I think something to remember as well with when it comes to ambience and stuff like that what what a lot of people forget is that you can actually um, especially with linear media you can just automate it you can have it in the beginning and then duck it out later and stuff like that but just kind of like filling in the gaps um, so yeah overall really really good everything that's there is great just adding more detail, making um, stuff a little bit more impactful. Um, so let's let's do a bit by bit and break this apart a little bit more. So I think here either, I, I would just say make this shorter. It doesn't need to be that long. You can already bring in the footsteps here. So you can have also a sound for it like retracting again. And then here, it, it's it's really cool, but it feels really kind of like empty. I'd love to hear an ambience in the distance for this, like maybe a low kind of like rumble type, like something like that. Um, and then also a, um, what is it called? Um, more reverb, because this is a huge hall and we've got like some pretty beefy footsteps. Same with this then. It's just like very quiet. And I'd love to just hear more of like the room, the reverb and a different perspective in terms of ambience. And then this is cool, but I feel like the jump is lacking. We should hear like a boom, big like a stuff like that into that room. But you can even pad it out with more stuff. And then here again, like the silence is cool, 
but I would almost add like a riser, like a really faint going up, like And then that's great. And you, you see the details here, there's like flaps of um, whatever the banners and stuff that are flapping away. You can add those like in left and right, just little details that will just really enrich it. It's, it's ear candy. Here, all of this is cool, but it's, it doesn't, it sounds like two men are fighting, not two like huge gods. I would love to hear just more based on those impacts. Um, more like intense footsteps and stuff. Basically, bring in more layers, beef it up. Same with the whooshes. It's like a versus I would like to go. And then this again, big moment. I It's like there's a little bit of a fizzle going on, but there's very little like low end. Yes, KT, agreed, more weight. And then like these things have a lot of weight. This, this, this is what I want. This is what I want all over this. Hefty, big weight, very good. Same with this also like, can add more whooshes to this as well. And bigger impacts. Again here, sounds like a bit like, sounds really cool, but it's just, it doesn't feel dangerous, you know? And you could again add like maybe a low pass on a drone or something like, and like pull it in and out again, or rather push it out, pull it in, kind of like really get the viewer like, whoa, and just play around with the mix a little bit more because there's like not much happening except for the sword fight. So it's kind of, it, I'd love to hear more non-literal sounds scattered in there to make it more exciting. Um, but yeah, that pretty much covers it. Same for all of this. And then here, it's like, it's really anticlimactic. The sounds are amazing, but it just doesn't feel that like insane. I wanna hear like a huge impact there, like a Kind of, um, yeah, you can you can bring in like a big cinematic stinger to go. <laughs> Back into maybe like a riser. Yeah. Anyway, you get the you get the gist. And then here, um, if you do keep this long clip, um, you can you can jump cut nicely here when he slams through into the next scene. So if you just cut it like. There. It looks nice because he's like flying and then rolling. Something like that, for example. There we go, that's it. And by just like that little cut, it just makes it flow nicer. Um, but yeah, I would personally drastically shorten this um, just maybe getting rid of like, kind of all of this. Just going the highlights. Cause you really don't need the full thing and you can just use the beginning and then some of the middle. Anyway, next clip. The monster sounds are awesome. Um, During those down moments, I'd love to hear more ambience so you can make the ambience um, duck a little bit more when you're doing things like, for example, um, the impacts and stuff. But then when you're when you have like silences, like here, you can have a little bit more of the fire and maybe creaks and other things. And also more foley of the player, and then again when the when the beast goes, you can then duck it again. I'm not saying make everything a sausage, but basically kind of like choose what to showcase at what points. Um, the creature sounds incredible, by the way. Really, really nice job. I like the vocalizations. It sounds really meaty. Sounds amazing. Um, the impacts. 
I'd love to make them bigger. They don't sound that impactful at the moment. I do realize that his sword isn't big, but it feels like, you know, he's doing a lot of damage. I'd like to hear, again, more weight to his impacts. <laughs> I love that little but yeah that's awesome i this clip is fantastic and then again here you can maybe cut this slightly quicker and there we go we just we just get get flowing and uh yes kt those cuts are really fun to make i agree i i love the kind of like reels a lot of the time, kind of like if you have one reel that's really, really good and another reel that's the same quality, but one of them is just like really well edited together, it will just be a better experience because it flows nicely. It doesn't feel like, oh, stop and start, stop and start, one clip, next clip. It's like one fluent thing and we go from one bit to the next to the next and you then are riveted throughout the whole action. It's basically like good storytelling, but... There's not necessarily a lot of story to tell, it's more the fact of like, we move fluently from one to the next. And it's a bit of an art, but it's kind of looking at the movement of things. So if something goes to the side, then we can, and it pans, then we can have another clip that like, then pans. And it doesn't even have to be that in, insane, right? But even here, just like the small, boom, going from the roll or whatever. And then here going from, kind of, I mean, that's, that's not great from me there, but yeah, it's just, a little bit like quicker. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, really nice. Again, get get a little thing for the outro as well when it like uh, goes back. Um, yeah, so overall, Vincenzo, well done. Really, really nice reel. Um, big, big up for this one. You've done a fantastic job. Your sound design is clearly at a very, very high level. Um, yeah, just some small things to refine, like I said better flow in the reel, make the clips or make this clip shorter, um, maybe replace it with another one and then you're, you're golden. Although to be fair, like you're at about one minute anyway. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's pretty decent um, in terms of like length and stuff. Um, yeah, more weight um, and a little bit more details in places, especially with the ambience as well. Katie says, do you think the Stingray needs a little sound motif? Hmm, that is, a, you know what? That is a very cool idea. I like that. Yeah, could could totally be the case. I'm struggling slightly to think of what to do with this one. It's one of those things where if you gave me probably like a little bit more time, I could tell you more. But I think for, for the moment, for me, the main thing is that we're focused on this and uh, have mainly got sounds for that, but I would love to hear a little bit more of like the rushing by of the things and stuff like that, uh, at least in the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the, the end is, is really great as well. It's cool. Anyway, well done. Very nice work. Um, so yeah, claps in the chat, folks. <laughs> cool. Next reel from Daniel. Let's go. Oh, I'm going to turn up the volume here. So yeah, just make sure that the volume is decent.
Ooh, very nice, very nice. I love the aesthetic with the um with the intro and outro and how you've kind of like blended that together. I have to say that's really really tasteful right there. Um, in general, really really good. Um, again, good clip selection. I think you've got a pretty nice variety in there without kind of like being too scattered. Um, and I think to be honest, the weakest part is this clip. I felt like the the end was really good. Uh, the beginning was also really good. I felt like the mid was slightly lacking. You've got some really good sounds in here, but um, it doesn't feel scary. And that is tricky. Making something scary is always a challenge. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you've, you will again have all of these lower rights in the nice font and stuff. The one thing again, same as with um, Vincenzo's reel is um, to, to please add the developer as well. Um, so we can see who has actually made the game. Um, cool. Let's just dive into the clips, to be honest. So starting with the first. Also here, too long. You can you can totally just make this. You don't need to have it that long. It's again, from the perspective of someone hiring, you've got, I don't know, 50 to 100 reels to watch, one minute to one minute 30 each. It's gonna be a long time, so we don't need to see that, these like intros for that long. We just got, wanna get into the action. The intros are great, but yeah, just make them short. This is definitely my favorite. I think this is great. Yeah, that's awesome. I really like this. I honestly don't have too much to say about this. This seems really good. It matches kind of like the aesthetic. There's a little bit of the mm, low poly kind of stuff in there. Not low poly, pixelated, but at the same time, it's like a quite clean, um, clean sound. So yeah, really, really cool stuff. I think if anything, this is slightly weak here. This and it's I think it's not it's not the sound itself it's it's more that it fades to black. You've got like a nice transition for all the others. It's kind of like I think just do it as that. Just not having it fade to black again. It feels like it's stopping and then restarting. Also here. This feels like it's out of time. Yeah, it is. Four. Yeah. He's not striking. So yeah, make sure that everything is synced because where the impact is, the impact should be here. The sound is happening here. So yeah, just make sure that you're you're tight when it comes to like uh, syncing the visuals. All right, ill. So straight up, you can see from a dynamics perspective, this is a little bit problematic. So we go from like being at this volume immediately to like very very quiet. So I'm gonna turn this up a little bit, but this should match volume. So we should have like similar volume throughout the entire reel. You don't wanna have someone have to readjust um, afterwards. All right, so this is an interesting clip. So as I turned it louder, I do feel like it's more scary. Um, there are more details in here, but I would love to hear like, I like the flies there. I think it'd be cool to hear kind of more 
stuff around the player as well in terms of with horror it's one of those things where sound really really carries it where you were dealing with this um what's what's it called so you've got tension and release and you kind of have to like build this tension and then then when you actually see the thing it's it's the release so it's it's kind of like you're you're dealing with the immediate release of course with visuals because they're here and and uh, the main scary part is that you know these these things are gonna whatever eat you or something um so i would love to hear maybe like some off screen like something falling down and cluttering kind of like the feeling of oh these are not the only ones we've got some in the other rooms that might break out of the um walls or something um so yeah things like that and then here i think this is a big moment this it's the it's this when when he turns because the player is really kind of slow here and this moment feels very anticlimactic so i would love to either hear like a i don't know like maybe a riser or the footsteps getting faster and there's more footsteps and stuff like falling as if they're like stumbling across stuff to trying to catch up with you And then here, like, I'd love to hear more of an impact of the shotgun when it goes first into the wall and then into the player, into the whatever enemy. The body fall is great. You can even add some more, like, splat when it falls to the floor. And I don't like the uh, here. Mainly just because it doesn't... It just makes it a little bit less... Ooh, this this is tricky it's it's really tricky this this stuff is so hard because it's also very subjective so i feel like you wanna almost again like you you see other kind of like another character stumbling out the room so it's kind of like give us more in the other room here like rummaging and more more coming like along or something like that it's like oh we've we've shot a shot now you've there's others coming, you hear like more footsteps or something, more creaking, maybe some stuff falling above. Um, there's a really good game, what is it, Alan Wake, I think there's a trailer for the for the new one and it's got, and some gameplay clips and it's got such good like sound design for, for horror. So I think just reference that and, and bring in some more elements from that. And yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, or you could like have a drone kind of like build up there and then we're not sure what happens. You could even cut the clip here, I would say, to, to create more tension. So basically have it like, have it like ramp up. After you shot the shotgun, you could then hear like others coming, footsteps, more footsteps and like urgency. And then it builds like the drone, like a rise and then you cut to the other clip and it's like <gasps> what happens what's what's going on so yeah um hey enrique how's it going good to see you and then you get also this is a great transition right so you get you go really really close and then you go straight into the payoff and that will be a really good like um kind of transition because then you have like a riser going up I'm just going to I'm just going to fill one in here. I'm going to add a, a a horror riser if I can. Um you're not going to see this on my screen. I'm going to horror riser. Let's see if I can bring something into here. If my uh soundly will be so kind. Alright, that's that's it. That's the one. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. So so I've just added So imagine something like this here. We're building up to the moment. There we go. That's that's a big payoff there.
And immediately you've got like a more interesting transition. You've got like more tension, more storytelling. The reel flows better. And it's all with a simple riser and like a different cut. So, you know, I think there's a big debate of people kind of saying like, oh, um, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to be video editors as well and this and that. And I agree, but I feel like actually it's in some ways I also disagree because I think learning like the basics of video editing and flow and stuff will just help you massively in in kind of like storytelling because it's the same stuff with sound. It's just that it's like, when do we transition? When do we change? How can we build tension? How can we release tension? How can we go from one scene into the next? And like, basically I worked on, on the quarry, right? Um, which is a horror game. And so that was like a bunch of cutscenes, And so it was really, you could choose this branch or that branch. And we had to really think about how do we flow from one thing into the other and make it like tense and exciting and stuff. And, and that was like a big, big lesson <laughs> in all of this. And it, so much of it is, is, um, down to do storytelling. Um, yes, Katie, it's about how much taste you have to uh, absolutely agree. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's let's just see how this sounds. Like. So we shoot. This is cool. I like it. Very conceptual. Very interesting. I love the textures in here. I'm a huge fan of textures and you've nailed these kind of like liquid ink stuff. Beautiful. Very, very, very textural. Um, I would say though that because it's a sound design reel, it's like, I love to hear a bit more sound because you're, you're applying for a role and the goal of the reel, while this is very artful and very cool, and well executed. At the same time, I'm trying to judge your sound design skills. So I'd love to hear a little bit more. So I'd love to hear some kind of like element for, for especially here, you've got nothing else on screen. And you've got like the things around it, but I kind of not necessarily that this needs a sound, but a little bit more. There's there's something missing in here. Even here, like you've got the big cinematic and then you've still got like these things happening so yeah i would just bring in more details have something maybe some foley or like soft whooshes that kind of stuff you can make it very artful as well um but yeah just just add in add in some more stuff all righty that was it for this one fantastic work overall um as i said main bits are add add the names in here of the studios, um, add smoother transitions. Don't don't make it stop start. Make it flow, and um, here as well, um, more details for what's happening around the player. That's really important in horror. It's all about like the space and tension you create through the space, and like the <gasps> what could be behind that door. Because honestly, that's where where the scary part lies. Once you see the thing, it's not as scary. It's the scary part is. What else could be here? What's behind that door? That's really like the most scary part in horror games generally. And that's why a lot of horror films and this and that don't reveal their monsters until very, very, very late into into the kind of plot. Um, and yeah, like use risers, use more cinematic elements and stuff. Uh, you've done it great in the, in the end, so yeah. Um, and yeah, that's it. Very nice job, Daniel. Um, fantastic. So yeah, great reel, huge potential. <clears throat> and we are on to Tony Cable. Tony has been doing some really, really cool stuff over on Air Wiggles for the sound design showdown with his team. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked out the sound design showdown, definitely check it out. There's, uh, there's some videos on Air Wiggles and on YouTube, which you can, you can find, um, if you type in Air Wiggles in YouTube 
and there's some recap videos as well if you don't want to watch the whole stream so definitely recommend we've got things like donkey being launched into a volcano so yeah don't wanna <laughs> miss those all right <laughs> Let me just... Nice. Good stuff, Tony. Um, well done. I just had to quickly check if that was in fact uh, the new reel, but yeah, it, it seems like it, so that's great. Um, sweet. So, first impressions. First impressions. Um, silences, like stuff like that at the end can just cut this whole thing goodbye the start also is the start is actually fine I would almost love to hear a little bit more sound design in here like transition for here you can bring in some more ear candy like a whoosh. Cool. so overall um, you can see the waveform there's some big discrepancies i'm not sure if discrepancies is the right word there's some big differences in volume so you want to once again as i said to daniel as well you just want to make sure that you've got your um volume all pretty much similar that you don't have to turn the knob up and down manually when i'm watching this the stuff you've got in there sounds really good um there's a bunch of places where I feel that the sound design is very literal um, and and there's not a lot of other things going on except for exactly what's on screen. So let's dive into it. For example, here, right? So super quiet distance amp like footsteps, but there's there's actually some ambience in there, but it's just so quiet. So be a little bit more aggressive with your mix. All right, so then here, there's a lot of like um, stop and start and, and kind of like jumpy things like here. Like there's, I'm not sure why there's silence. This should be a full boom. And then we kind of like don't hear um, the other person coming up. So I would almost like to hear a little bit more there. But okay, so general, getting ahead of myself. Cool, then, then another thing that really stands out, like all the stuff you've got in there is really cool. But this, all of a sudden you've got like very, very good candy. And then this whoosh just sounds totally, um, <laughs> what's, what's it called? Um, it's not world eyes. So everything else sounds like, okay, comes from the scene. It's pretty good in terms of world eyes. Could maybe have a little bit more reverb in places. But then this whoosh is super stereo and you want to make this mono. There we go. And then you actually hear what's happening. And then same with, there's a, like again, very like a, a stop and a start. So this whole thing feels really, really choppy. You want to make that a, a lot more fluid by having more Foley in there. And 
an entire like ambience bed and kind of like maybe there's some stuff happening around because obviously it's a fight scene so you can have different things like maybe some shots to the left some like punches or skids to the right um, maybe some metal groaning as like a backdrop just a little bit more to fill out and, and give this whole thing uh, a, a bed to lie on, some some foundation, because um, it all feels very kind of like detached from the scene at the moment. Um, and then in terms of the actual fighting stuff, um, yeah, I think like the beginning part sounds really good. It's more like this second part, which needs a little bit more work in terms of Foley. Um, yes, missing a reverb tail as well, Enrique, very, very well noted. Uh, and then here again, like, we go into black, and to a long black transition, which is just kind of like, wasting, uh, time, basically. So you could, you could basically go from here into the jump. From the motion of left flying into jump. Okay, maybe that doesn't work quite as well as I thought. Well, I think you probably have to start from here. Something like that. And you'd... <laughs> yeah. But you could even have like a reverb tail of like a boom into the fall kind of like and, the, and, and it goes like... Uh, let, let, me, let me demonstrate this. Um... Let's see, I'm trying to... <laughs> trying to find something interesting here. That works. Will this work? Let's see. If anyone's interested, I think it'd be fun to do like a series or like a live stream of kind of like people sending in reels and stuff like that. And, and I actually... Um, Kind of like uh, add add some sounds and, and and fix stuff up. I think that would be fun to actually illustrate this. Oh, that that's not bad. This might be interesting as well. Let's see. I want to. There we go. That's that's a decent riser. All right. So. Let's see how this sounds. Might not work. There we go, that's it. Look, literally. We've went from it being very choppy into it being like, as uh, Katie said, as if that punch knocked him out cold into the next scene. <laughs> Just by adding some non-diegetic, um, uh, what's it called, elements in terms of like cinematic sound design elements. Okay, then here I think um, this is nice. But then this is very lackluster, kind of. I'd love to hear um, a little bit more of a... What's it called? S something more in terms of the motion, especially when, like, doing the swinging. Like, there's... Spider-Man is making all of these different type, like, body movements. And then there's this web that he's cast is being put under immense strain so you you could hear like some tension as well here for the rope and like definitely some more whooshing because it goes from like intense to pretty much nothing at all and here in general i would say um the the uh the rope sounds they're very very stereo and very wide they don't they don't really sound like they're coming from Spidey, so I would um, just make sure that you're that you're kind of like making the things that are supposed to be in the world um, 
come from the places they should and that doesn't mean hard panning but rather kind of like making the stereo width like bring in a little bit in and then when there's a really big moment you can kind of like make it really wide and that way you get like more contrast make it more exciting and stuff um and then these whooshes rather than having like a short that's very kind of like again overlaid have it more of a longer um a little bit more of like a softer rather than like a more of like a wind whoosh and it'd be cool to maybe hear also when we get like closer to the ground some more like crowd sounds and stuff like that um just to illustrate like a little bit more that we're flying through the city and that we're at the different heights and stuff like that. And then once again here, we've got a very long section of black. So again, you can go a jump cut into the next section. And while this is very neat, this section, like I like that you are doing game jams. That's fantastic and really, really good. Um, great way to, to get experience. Um, I feel like they probably don't really belong in the real unless they're a really, really polished like game. Just because they don't necessarily show the best sound design off simply because um in a real kind of that's really like this is my sound design um this is like the height the peak of my abilities of what i can do so i would bring in um like all of your best elements that are like purposefully tailored together it's like your ticket to to hey give me an interview give me a chance give me give me an audio test basically so a game jam is like something you put on your website um, to then once once you basically have showed off your really, really high quality demo reel afterwards, then people will be like, oh, this person is awesome. Let me check out their website, which is linked at the end. Maybe, maybe not. It's not linked at the end. Maybe you want to link it at the end. Um, and then I can check out your website, um, which also obviously is in your application. And then I can see, oh, great. You've done a game jam. You've got some implementation experience. You've got some experience from working in a team. You've done like, I don't know, a couple of different ones. That's wonderful. You know, you're being proactive in the community, this, that, and the other thing. And it's bonus points. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, especially with here also, because you've got music in there. Music in a sound design reel is generally not a good idea uh, unless you are... Um, unless it's like small musical elements or it's specifically asked for like, oh, we want someone who has music and sound design skills. So I would leave this clip out um, and put something else in. Um, and then the last one. Ooh, that's a lot of volume. Oh, I love the bats. Very nice. The bats are a great detail. So here, I feel that... Um, kind of... There's everything that's in there is good, but I'd love to hear more like what's happening here. So we're clearly spinning some kind of thing that is activating a power or whatnot. We've, we've And then these things go together and I'd love to hear like a big like kind of before that maybe some cracking of some sort as like oh this this is like literally like ripping the stone that's been here for ages and ages into this or the metal that's kind of like in the stone now and overgrown so kind of like having more organic elements and and dust and stuff that falls down and also more like of an energy when you when you have this like and then and just again like more of a deep impactful layer and the bats are beautiful yeah uh, also with the tags uh, please add the um, company name as well that'd be great um, overall really good stuff um, very good start um, 
to a reel. Um, definitely fill it out with some more stuff, revisit those clips. And um, and yeah, really the, the key is more details, more ambiences, and like the, again, the flow. Bring in, don't be, don't be afraid to add in non-diagelic elements. So cinematic stingers and risers and stuff like that to enhance kind of the, the story and, um, and the whole flow of it. Um, and yeah, just basically, um, also beware of your stereo uh, image. So when there's stuff that's very wide, it tends to sound a little bit more disconnected and big. And when you put it in mono, um, it's a lot more worldized and, uh, and makes it feel that way. Also, same with reverbs and stuff. Um, be careful of like putting too much, but you can automate it and you can, you know, make things big or small and kind of like bring it in or off. But um, yeah, reverb is also always a good thing. Um, awesome. I think that was it. So thank you so much to Vincenzo, Daniel and Tony. Really, really, really solid stuff in there. Great work. Um, and yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Are there any questions, any comments, any any interesting thoughts on on these uh, three wonderful reels? And thanks everyone for tuning in as well. Thank you, Green. That's very kind. I appreciate it. That's great. Yeah, it's been this this one was a really 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 good one. Very, very fun as well. These were these were some solid reels. I'm exciting to to hear the the improved versions soon, hopefully. Um, so yeah. All right. In that case, sorry for the technical issues at the start, everyone. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a fantastic day, morning, evening, night whatever time zone you're in. So yeah, take care and uh, have a great time. Oh, also Green asks, how is it participate to, uh, how is it possible to participate with my reels? So at the moment, submissions are closed. However, they will be opened very soon again. Um, and this is the link. So yeah, I'll, Basically, I have been over the summer, I've been very inactive with this because um, we had aircon and sound design showdown and a bunch of stuff happening over at Air Wiggles. So that's taken up my time. But I have scheduled monthly live streams uh, until February. And um, I shall be picking, I shall be reopening this again and basically then, um, yeah, picking picking some of the reels. Um, I need to figure out exactly how I do it, but I want to reopen the submissions again, basically. So yeah. Anyways, have a great day and take care, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next month. Um, I think on the 15th or the 13th. Let me check. The next one will be on the... Dun, 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 the 15th of November. So yeah.